Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about face distortion synthesis. What it is, how it works, why it's cool and why you should care about it. First, a little bit of history. Um, it was invented by Casio in the early to mid 80s. Uh, what you see here is actually the flagship, the CZ-1000. It was released a little bit later on, but you can also see that it is clearly one of the typical 80s digital synthesizers. So now digital synthesizers had one particular advantage, and that was that they were relatively cheap to produce. However, they also had a downside. While digital oscillators sounded relatively good, digital filters did not just because the processing power wasn't there yet. So they had to come up with something and uh, the Casio engineers were actually very clever. They couldn't use FM because that was already used and patented by uh, Yamaha with the DX7. So they had to come up with something different, which is kind of similar or related, but it's its, its own thing. Just as a side note, uh, even Arturia has now an emulation of the CSET seri series with their kind of typical enhancement. So you can bet on it if Arturia remodels it, it's worth something. And of course, also in Bitwig, we have something similar. We have the phase one, which is actually a phase distortion oscillator. Okay, so first the principle. Um, you see here a perfect sine wave. Let me drop in an oscilloscope, hook it up, change this to pitch. Okay, as we can see, normal sine wave, nothing special. And it also sounds that wave. Now, the game changes when I open this shape knob and it starts slowly to deform until it ends up being a sawtooth or like almost a sawtooth. And it also sounds different. And now what's interesting about that, so instead of running this through a filter, you can simply take an envelope and modulate the shape. And now it sounds like this. Well, I'll definitely try to make a baseline with this. Haven't tried it yet. So, and that actually sounds quite decent, despite the fact that there is no filter involved. And this is this is the core principle. They also uh, use different kind of ways how you could distort, or yeah, distort the phase. And this looks slightly different. It almost kind of squeezes the, the sine wave together and shoves it, shoves it to the left side. Then um, we have one that actually folds the lower part over and then applies kind of some sort of pulse width modulation actually, or also shoves it to the left side. Then we, the next one kind of doubles the frequency and when I open the shape kind of moves those one sine wave together, folds it back together into almost one. And then the last one takes the entire wave shape and applies some kind of pulse width modulation as well in a different way. So now what we are interested in is, you know, how does this actually work? So we will start building this oscillator again from scratch, or at least one that is very similar. Um, for that, we take the sine wave oscillator and disconnect the other one. Uh, maybe duplicate the oscilloscope so that we have uh, both available for comparison. And now I will turn off the internal phase of this oscillator. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made an entire video about uh, phase and warping and so forth. Uh, it might become in handy if you really uh, want to understand what's what's going on. Otherwise, I will just continue here. Um, and of course, we need an external phaser to replace the internal one. Set the modulation amount to 100%. And now we are back to where we have been before. So 
Uh, back to the first phase. Uh, let's remove that one. To the first shape. Okay, so moving this, changing this into a sawtooth. Now, when we look at the end result, we can clearly see what's actually going on. We just go from the lowest amplitude to the highest amplitude and actually just ignore the rest of the cycle. Right. So how can we reproduce this here? I opened already the, the face panel. And now let's take, I don't remember, is it a skew? Or first we need to align these two phases because yeah, as you can see, the phase is now just randomly somewhere. And what this phase does, it will just be added to the existing phase. So by enabling phase reset and then hitting a note, once now they are aligned, this phase is on zero. And now we have no kind of phase rotation anymore. And so now it already behaves the way I want it. Pretty much the same thing. I can fold it to a sawtooth, and that's what happens with the phase. It's also interesting to to look at it and to see how the phase actually gets uh, distorted. And it's what we expect. It's actually at the 50% amplitude where we start shifting it to the left. 50% amplitude is exactly the middle of the cycle right and shove this over and actually uh, this oscillator is phase inverted compared to the phase one so let's invert the signal as well so that we don't get any uh, confusion go to level the easiest way is to use an attenuation knob and to make it bipolar and then just reduce the amplitude to minus 100 so now let's look at the second one. Okay, that looks pretty much like pulse width modulation. And the module we use for this is here, the format. Let's check that out. And that's the wrong direction. And that's it already. And what it does to the phase is, well, basically, it stays at the start position, runs to the phase quicker, and then stays at the end position. And then restarts the cycle. And again, the comparison, it does exactly the same thing. So that's how that works. Okay, the next one. Okay, first it folds the waveform. Let me press the note that we have a little bit more on the display. First, it folds the lower part of the signal upwards and then, not that one, it again uses kind of a uh, formant or pulse width modulation. So what we need to do is we need to duplicate the formant and maybe let's return them both to zero and if you go in this direction we get what we did before if we move it in a negative direction we create exactly the signal that we see here although phase inverted but that's not a problem and actually to get the precise result you need to move it 12 semitones down so now we have the the basic signal. The, what and now we can continue to manipulate it. Not in this direction, uh, but actually no. Also not in this direction. What happens? Um, no, uh, we need to take this for a month and place it in front of the other. Now, okay. Now it works. Now we have the exact same behavior again. Okay, so we have reproduced this one. Now let's go to the next one. And this one folds almost the sine waves together. 
until the frequency is, well, basically half of what it was before. Now, the way to achieve this is using a sync module. And, well, as you can see in Bitwig, we are not limited to one shape or the other. We can just use them all together and uh, create something completely new. Okay, let's take the sync. And if we enter 12 semitones, um, we have doubled the frequency. And if we now, um, I not the formant, but uh, skew, if we now skew the waveform, we see exactly the same thing happening, right? <laughs> And all of these modes create different overtones and are supposed to be modulated by an ADS-R, or I do think the CSET series even had more complex, actually, multi-stage envelopes. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I do think they had something like this. And, of course, we can also just take this and, well, apply it to the skew. Oh, no. And here we are back to... Sounds pretty much... sounds. No, it actually sounds exactly the same as this one. So, uh, what else? There's the last one. Here. All this takes the entire waveform and just squeezes it. Okay, how is this done? Actually, the only thing we need to do is shift the phase of the signal. Now, let's, let me experiment real quick. I do not remember where exactly I had to insert the phase shift, but I think it was here. Okay, and actually exactly 25%. And now when you start moving the formant, you get this squeezed sine wave. So that's actually the whole idea behind uh, this oscillator. Uh, Take a sine wave, distort or manipulate its phase in a specific way, and then animate the phase distortion, right? Take these parameters and manipulate them with either a envelope or an LFO, one or multiple of them. Of course, in Bitwig, we have the possibility to do everything all at once. We have additional possibilities. I mean, we can then take this phase oscillator and FM it, either phase FM or pitch FM. Uh, we also have a feedback here, which is kind of interesting. Unfortunately, this cannot be replicated with any other oscillator because uh, we can kind of introduce feedback, but we also have to introduce the long delay, which also in its minimum setting uh, has way too much delay to get uh, satisfying results. So this feedback is unique to the phase oscillator. And so I also encourage you to actually use it. And okay, one thing is missing actually. What I also wanted to talk about is let's connect that one real quick. We have this little F here, the frequency knob. And what we do here is actually we, yeah, pretty much it's, pretty identical to the sync that we have here. And what we end up with is uh, a signal which has more overtones, so it sounds a lot more resonant when I then modulate the shape. Probably. As you can hear, it's uh, still basically the same kind of sound, but it, it sounds as if you applied uh, resonance. Now, 
back to our oscillator, we can achieve a similar effect, although not exactly the same. Uh, I would have to figure out how to wire this up. Uh, we can achieve a similar effect when we increase the sync here. Well, but I would use um, only kind of um, whole numbers. So well, either 12, which is an octave, or 24, which is two octaves. And then uh, we just start manipulating. Well, it sounds pretty similar, but it's not exactly the same. I mean, if you look at the waveforms, there are some differences, but this is not a downside and it might be interesting. So yeah, this video was quite technical, uh, but I hope uh, you enjoyed it. You learned something and uh, you will do something nice using the phase one oscillator, which uh, clearly deserves a bit more love, especially from my side, because I completely ignored it at the beginning because I had no clue what it actually does. Now I know and I will try to use it a lot more often and see what I can get out of it. That's it already. Like, comment, subscribe and see you next time.